Recording stopped. Recording in progress.
for attention, please. Before we begin, I would like to inform you about the rules of this event. One, Zoom participants, log in with an account with the format, full name underscore institution name. For example, Paramasepti underscore UGM. Two, participants wear not neat and polite clothes. Three, participants who have been allowed to join by the host do not have to send a present in the chat column. Four, in the end of the meeting, the committee will share online presents through the QR code and chat column. Five, participants can submit questions in the question and answer session through the Q&A column with the format, full name underscore question. Six, participants are required to follow the entire series of the program from the beginning to the end. Seven, participants who do not attend and the attendance form in both day one and day two will not receive a certificate. Eight, a certificate will distribute maximum three weeks after the event is held. Nine, participants are not allowed to leave the meeting room with permission or do other things outside the event. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the International Guest Lecture on Health Information Management 2023, titled Digital Competencies for Health Information Professionals, Day 2. Thank you for participating in today's event. This event is hosted by Health Information and Services Department, Vocational College, Universitas Kajang. My name is Francisca Ranti Citraloka as the host of this event. And now let me welcome our special guest. Welcome to our Honorable Professor Dr. In Insinyur Agus Mariono as the Dean of Vocational College, Universitas Jamada. Welcome to our Honorable Dr. Nuroman SSE Mkong as the Head of Health Information and Services Department. Welcome to our Honorable Speaker, Ms. Hosna Salmani, PhD candidate. Welcome to our Honorable Moderator, Ms. Rita Dian Pratiwi as KEP MPH. And last but not least, welcome to the guests and audiences. Now, we are going to take a picture together. For all guests, please turn on the camera and we are going to screen capture for the documentation. Wednesday, I would like to remind you all guests to turn on the camera because we are going to screen capture for the documentation. Thank you. Okay, I will begin the documentation. First slide one on my count. One, two, three.
Once again, for slide one. One, two, three. Next for the second slide. On my count, one, two, three. Once again for slide two. One, two, three. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, now we'll begin our main program, plenary session, who will be led by our moderator. It is now my deep pleasure to introduce our moderator, Ms. Sadian Pratiwi Eskep MPH. Hello, Ms. Rita, good morning. Hello, Mbak Francisca, good morning. It is nice to see you again. And how are you today, Ms. Rita? Alhamdulillah, very good. Glad to hear that, Miss. And now, please allow me to read Miss Rita curriculum vitae. Miss Rita Dian Pratiwi was born on September 13, 1989. She is on ongoing education from 2020, Universitas Gajah Mada, doctoral program in medicine and public health, faculty of medicine. Public Health and Nursing, FKKMK. From 2016 until 2019, she's a Manager of Research, Community Service and Relations at Department of Health Information and Services, Sekolah Fasi Universitas Gajah Mada. Right now, she is a Chief Editor in Jurnal Kesehatan Vokasional, National Accredited Sinta II. And here are some of her research and publications. From year 2022, Evaluation of System Information TB's Implementation in Indonesia. Year 2021, An Analysis of Readiness to Implementation the CP to Support the National Health Insurance Process in Hospital, a Literature Review. And then there is POSIA, Oshandu at Portland CP, year 2020. And then there is forecasting of patient safety incident at Spatial Region of Yogyakarta Hospital, year 2018. Ms. Rita Dian Pratiwi will let for the next few sessions. For Ms. Rita Dian Pratiwi, the screen is yours. Yeah, thank you, Mbak Francisca. Alhamdulillah, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as we embark on day two of IG HIM 2023, uh, I must express my gratitude for the opportunity to serve as your moderator again. And uh, our conversation uh, continues uh, to resolve around impactful healthcare innovation, which today spotlight on. Uh, Big data analysis analytic with electronic uh, health records. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, allow me to introduce our distinguished uh, speaker for uh, today, uh, Dr. Ken Salami Hosna, originating from Iran. Uh, she holds a PhD specialist in data analytic within healthcare and uh, her research has been reported literally featuring a plethora of publications that have made a significant impact in healthcare industry and today she brings her wealth of knowledge of to our forums. Uh, Ms. Hosna, Assalamualaikum. How are you today, Ms. Hasna? Yes, uh, hello everybody. And thank you so much for your invitation. Yeah. I'm yeah. so happy to see you again. Yes, thank you. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Uh, it is to like to collaborate with you once more. Uh, our previous online session were insightful and I have no doubt uh, today will be just as um, original. Uh, Ms. Hasna, may I know how are you feeling about sharing your insight on the complete uh, subject of uh, big data analysis in 
yeah, yeah. out with our audience today. Uh, yes, uh, if uh, everything is okay, I can share my slide to explain more about it. Uh, can I start? Yeah. Maybe you can uh, express your feeling to join with us today. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, actually, everything is about <laughs> is all about uh, big data because uh, in healthcare industry, we always have uh, new data and uh, in this case, we should manage this. And so we should have a solution to, to, for example, improve the healthcare quality. And that's why it's very important uh, to know how can, for example, uh, we should manage this, for example, amount of data and uh, that, for example, we can uh, receive from uh, various resources, like, for example, electronic health records, hospital information system, everything. And also, for example, if we have a patient monitoring and in home care, we should, for example, find a solution to receive data with the high quality because it's very important. And it's on the patient's safety and also it came back to patient and we should, for example, improve patient first and at the end, we can find it's a very easy solution to, for example, improve our health care as, well as, for example, as soon as, soon as possible, yes. Yes, Amr, uh, that's uplifting to hear, uh, Ms. Hosna. Your purpose is sparking a, a ripple of enthusiasm uh, among us. Uh, on behalf of uh, attendees, uh, I can say we point to uh, on the ends of our seats and keenly waiting for your contribution. Uh, before we dive into uh, today's compelling topic, it is imperative that we acquire uh, ourselves with uh, the remarkable journey and achievement of uh, Dr. Candida uh, Salami Hasna. Uh, I will read your tribune uh, today. Uh, Miss, yeah, uh, Miss Salami Hosna, uh, completing uh, her bachelor degree in computer science, and uh, now she uh, in her PhD specialist in healthcare data analysis with her uh, research focusing on the implementation of big data in EHR. And in the pro uh, professional uh, Spear, uh, recording stopped with a uh, renewed uh, healthcare in institution and tech company, and she has over a dedicated recording in progress. experience in data analysis, playing key roles in innovative healthcare such as a uh, Ministry of Health and Medical Education uh, in November 2020 to October 20 and 22. Iranian National Population uh, Based Cancer, her deputy of Tehran University of Medical Science in April to 20, 20, uh, 2018 uh, until July 2019 uh, in the cancer registration and evaluation expert. And in the Iran University of Medical Science, uh, I am IUMS in September 2018 to February 2019 uh, as teaching assistant. And then uh, in the Iran University of Medical Science in September to June uh, 2019 as research assistant. Next. And this is uh, the education of education background of Ms. Hosna. Uh, she has a PhD in health information uh, science October 2021 until 2024. Uh, in management school of health management and information science uh, in the Iran University at Medical Science Tehran, Iran. And she also has already 
as um, MSc of Health Information in September 2017 uh, to February 2021 in the majority of Technology School of Health Management and Information Science in Iran University of Medical Science, Tehran, Iran, with the thesis field in mobile health, self-management, and cancer. And she already has a Bachelor of Science of Health Information Technology in September 2013 to August 2017. The majority uh, of School of Health Management and Information Science, Iran University of Medical Science, uh, Tehran, Iran. And she has uh, received uh, numerous uh, awards, uh, most notably the Innovation in Healthcare, right? uh, award from International Healthcare Foundation, uh, such as uh, YTX Life Global 2021, uh, Yacht Health Scholarship Contest, winner by UNESCO in Oakland, California, USA. Uh, and then top uh, 10 global truck leader and influencer on health tech and health and wellness in 2023 by Ticker, uh, Ticker 316. Uh, and then top uh, 25 uh, digital health influencer in 2023 is by Digital uh, Salutum. And the last is top in 150 exponential health tech professional in 2022 and 2023 issued by Exponential Health Tech. And she also uh, 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 she no stranger uh, to speaking engagement. Yes, she beside her various online uh, talk, she also had a uh, the opportunity to present offline in West Java and reach uh, the regional health healthcare community with uh, her invaluable insight. Uh, uh, she is speaker at the uh, Sotu for DPD, DPD for Miki, Indonesia Professional Organization of Medical Record and Health uh, Information, with the topic applying of big data to improve the quality of healthcare. Uh, health workforce already in West Java, Indonesia in July 2023. And then uh, a speaker at Commission on Science and Technology for Sustainable Development in South Concept, Concept International Webinar on Health for All True Digital Enable Efficiency Health System Middle East and Central Asia in April 2023. And the last uh, Speaker at Department of Healthcare Management, Chief Kara University, uh, with the topic Digital Transformation in Health, Man uh, Health Information Management in April 2023, Punjab, India. Uh, outside of her professional life, uh, Dr. Uh, Candidat Hasna has volunteered with multiple non-profit uh, contribute a uh, skill provide data driven healthcare uh, solution is underserved community. Uh, she volunteers uh, many experience. Uh, there are member of Hims Telehealth community in, in January 2023 until 2025 uh, Chicago, USA. And uh, she also as a reviewer, reviewer at HIMSS the 24 Global Health Conference and Exhibition uh, in uh, March uh, in Orlando, USA. And we also invite judge for the five uh, annual Digital Health uh, Hope Foundation Digital Health Awards, uh, XLT8 in 8 uh, to 11 October 2023, Las Vegas, USA. And she also has a review again in the HIMSS uh, 2023 Global Health Conference and exhibition in uh, 
17 to 21 April uh, Chicago, USA. Um, there are so many uh, skill and interest uh, into health uh, care projects such as uh, health information technology, uh, and then health information management and mobile health. Internet of Things or IoT, and then also uh, digital health and e-health. And she has a been a uh, part of Grand Beacon project and has a prolific uh, portfolio as uh, publication uh, in Steam Journal, and particularly they are focusing on integration of big data in healthcare, such as uh, a books in e-health. Uh, technology concept strategy and extend in security in 2020. And then she also published in journal uh, with title Smartphone Best Application for STEM Management of Passion with Product Hub Venture and uh, Development and Usability Evaluation Support Supportive Care in Cancer Journal uh, in 2022. And then she also uh, conduct in research project uh, with the writer of the reported heart pump system for treatment and diagnosis in uh, cancer as a systematic review. Okay, uh, but uh, this is the curriculum of the picture. Uh, but we uh, before we start our uh, discussion, ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to clarify uh, the procedure for this section uh, uh, discussion. Uh, Ms. Hosna uh, will be presentation for one hour, and I will remind you when there are uh, only five minutes uh, remaining. And for audience, uh, uh, keep your microphone mute, uh, and then question can be submitted via the chat in Q and A section. Uh, and due to the time uh, constraints, we'll, we will be able to accommodate only uh, in uh, three questions. Thank you for your attention so far. Uh, without other ado, it is uh, no time to main event, ladies and gentlemen. It is my immense pleasure uh, to pass uh, the future set uh, over, the, over to Ms. Hosna. Ms. Hosna, uh, the time is, uh, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you so much for giving me the time to share my knowledge. I will share my slide. If it's okay, I can continue. Yeah. Okay. In the name of God, uh, and uh, thank you so much for today. I'm so happy to see you again. And the topic that I want to talk about is related to implementation of big data analytics within electronic health records. What I want to talk about is uh, about introduction, big data revolu revolutionizing in healthcare, why this shift is very important. Um, for example, what we can drive, um, for example, benefits from big data, cautious and also concern and also solution and also future of this study. So as we know, big data refer to the extremely large set of healthcare data and that we can, for example, expect from a wide variety of sources like electronic health record, pharmaceutical research, genomic sequencing, everything. For example, medical devices, remote patient monitoring that we can expect in, in for example, sensor that we, we can extract data from the wearables, actually. And also insurance companies, physicians, hospitals, clinics, everything. Uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Hustler, is unclear. 
<laughs> Mm, yes, it was. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. it's okay now. So, um, we can see that um, these data are so complex, massive, that we can, for example, extract it and vary it from resources, several resources. And that's why managing these data is very important. And also, with, for example, traditional harvest kind of near um, is impossible. So we should have, for example, data management method and data management tool. One of them can be, for example, electronic health record. But um, in this case, we should, for example, find cloud-based uh, solution that can help us to establish a, a big data infrastructure. It's very important to have this infrastructure because the, the big data, uh, like, for example, what we extracted from the radiology report, or radiology and picture, that's very um, important to have, for example, cloud-based solution to manage them, to manage, the, for example, the storage, because um, the storage that, for example, with hardware, tradi traditional hardware is kindly impossible. So, um, What, for example, can expect from the big data is like we should, for example, a solution for, for example, having integrated data. And we should, for example, analyze the data from this, for example, platform. That's very important for us and that in, for the future, we can expect um, the improvement in healthcare. So... About um, big data revolutionizing healthcare. Um, this can enable, um, we can, for example, expect it um, by enabling advanced patient care, innovative treatment, and breakthrough medicine. You can can book the And availability of uh, this uh, data can, imp can empower. providers, caregiver, administrator, every everyone, for example, who benefits from data. That's why I told you that availability of this kind of data is very important. And at the end, we can expect that we enhance the quality of care and deliver to patient. Most of the data can be benefited on patient. That's why it's very important to manage it very carefully you know, with the The, for example, high satisfaction and of a patient. And also, uh, big data analytics play um, a crucial role in increasing efficiency, defining best practice, reducing cost, uh, and um, also because, for example, um, if, for example, we have a cloud-based solution, um, we don't need, for example, the uh, hardware storage and uh, something like that. That's why one of the solution is that, and also at the end we can expect that uh, we have reducing costs in our healthcare. So why this shift is very important. Uh, so um, uh, using uh, big data analytics to deliver evidence-based information will also increase efficiency, define best practices, and also as I told you, decrease costs. And also, um, we have we can, for example, expect that um, this can help us to better patient tracking, improve diagnosis, improve treatment of opioid addiction, faster development of treatment, reduce fraud, and more efficient uh, medical imaging, uh, and better healthcare staff scheduling models, reduced costs, efficient also electronic health record access. I will go through each of the, uh, them and explain further. One of them is a better patient tracking. You know that uh, this uh, kind of solution and also very well are, are already creating dramatic improvement in patient care. And for example, um, as um, my project that uh, I work on is electronic patient reported outcome. And for example, we can ex extract information and data from patient by you know, some measurement, like um, patient monitoring measures uh, that we can um, manage patient effectively. And uh, at the end, 
we have a lot of data that we can analyze it as as well and at the end we can expect that for example what is the, our pattern and to predict the, the, the disease it's very important for us and also in guessing, verifying, and organizing that um, data is very crucial um, of the success of this system. And um, this can also help reducing hospital readmission, improving in home care, and also reducing costs. These opportunities also help us uh, to use this data for future research because we have a lot of data. And we should extract the pattern from this, uh, for example, in a large data. But first of all, we should have, for example, we should clean the data. We should, uh, for example, um, pre-analyze it uh, to be, for example, easily accessible and uh, to be, uh, for example, be pure uh, for, for example, future research and for future prediction. Another one is improved diagnosis. Uh, so um, one of the uh, largest uh, challenges uh, for diagnosis is proper and timely disease identification. So it's very important uh, to have uh, early detection. Uh, and uh, with, for example, this data, as I told you, we can, for example, have a predictive analytics uh, to find the pattern and at the end, we can, for example, predict a specific disease uh, that we are, for example, looking for. And data mining, data mining and analysis uh, help us, um, for example, to identify the cause of illnesses, uh, to detect, for example, um, this disease, and also reduce uh, life-changing or uh, life-shortening consequences. Improve the treatment of uh, opioid addiction. So another um, use of uh, this big data analytics is, um, for example, with machine learning and, and also analytics, we can, for example, identify patients that, for example, are on high risk. So it's very important. For example, in um, opioid addiction also in, for example, another diseases, all can be extracted from big data. And also big data help us to reverse medication events by detecting medication error. You know that um, uh, we have um, medication error uh, in hospital a lot, and uh, we should, for example, prevent this kind of error uh, in future. That's why it's very important to manage it as uh, easily as um, and, um, one of the solution is big data, big data management tools. So also uh, using um, petabytes is very like a huge amount of data of the pharmaceutical and insurance data. Data scientists are able to identify risk factors that uh, predict opioid abuse tendencies. Uh, another one is a faster development of treatment. So it's uh, really clear that, for example, um, this kind of uh, tools uh, at the end, uh, for example, we can have um, the faster development of the treatment and uh, data driven medical and pharma oncological research is um, leading the discovery of new treatment and medicine. Uh, for example, we should have um, like um, pattern and algorithm to detect a specific disease, or for example, um, we should, for example, extract the data from uh, the um, patient that have similar um, sign and symptom, and uh, we can, for example, have the trend and what will happen in the future. So um, they need to observe variation in the human genome uh, and also having a personalized care is very important. And also for personalized care, that we should, for example, have a specific, for example, treatment for a specific um, patient and a specific drug that uh, we'll use for a specific patient. It's very important to have this. And uh, because the, the data of the genome is uh, the huge amount of data, we should have the uh, cloud-based solution to um, 
adopted and personalized care in our hospital or clinics. And also, um, as I told you, we should have the data pattern in our big data and also machine learning allow big data to study the genome and apply the correct treatment like personalized care and also this process um, or precision medicine in it's in the similar meaning and also this process works with uh, non genetically derived illnesses as well uh, another one is the reduced fraud so uh, you know that um, for example uh, we should have uh, the privacy uh, for patients. It's, it's very info important for us. And also the, this healthcare industry is one of the most uh, vulnerable industry. So it's, it's very important uh, to manage the data and uh, we should, for example, manage the access. Uh, you know that uh, we should, for example, um, set several users for physician, for patient, for, for example, who um, benefits from data. And then we should, uh, for example, put the access uh, to the each part of the, our system, not all parts, because uh, most of the people who benefit doesn't need all information. Only, for example, um, but the physician is uh, different, but the nurses should only uh, monitor patients. Not for, for example, financial um, uh, section or something like that. That's why it's very important uh, to, for example, give access uh, to our user specifically. And also, healthcare organization can use data management tools to quickly and efficient, efficiently identify and treat and also errors. So this kind of solution uh, can identify changes in network traffic and also and detect uh, cyber att attacks and also uh, suspicious uh, behavior, like for example, inaccurate claims. Very important uh, to consider all. So another one is uh, more efficient medical image. So you know that um, medical uh, imaging documents is costly, and I mean a storage of this. And also uh, the examination relies on highly skilled professional. Uh, so in during COVID-19, we have, for example, uh, the solution for managing this um, data from, for example, CT scan. So uh, we have a large amount of data, but um, the scientists uh, can, for example, develop a system that can extract pattern. And uh, at the end, uh, they can, for example, uh, predict the disease that is uh, like a pneumonia or COVID-19. It's uh, different and with, uh, for example, similar symptoms. So uh, big data analytics for healthcare changes and the nature in which these images uh, are now assessed. And also this allows physicians to make it more accurate diagnosis, as I told you. Because, um, for example, if we have a system together, um, we should, for example, identify specific pattern and also offering a specific and numeric outputs. And also these algorithms um, can analyze a vast number of medical imaging uh, at an um, exponential rate, saving both time and also money. And also we can, for example, easily access the image um, because, for example, user can enter to the login uh, to the system and can see the images. And nowadays, uh, for example, uh, we have it uh, in this most of our hospital, most of the images are now electronically, um, for example, um, exchange between the, the internal uh, hospitals and also um, most of them uh, can easily uh, will be shown by also patient. Patient can log in and also see their picture as well. Uh, so another one is a better healthcare staff scheduling models that um, this machine learning analysis uh, uncover relevant pattern in visit and also admission rate to solve inefficiency. 
So um, this um, big big data offer predictive solution, as I told you, that are uh, able to anticipate the visit and admission rates. So you know, you know that if, for example, uh, we have uh, screening um, before, for example, disease it can uh, help us uh, to, for example, prevent um, uh, the future, for example, impact on patient. You know that um, most of the disease like uh, chronic disease like cancer, everything. And if, for example, we have a pre-diagnosis, and at the end we can, for example, expect that um, it can, for example, cause uh, the improve of healthcare. And also, this solution can reduce uh, labor costs, improve uh, customer service, reduce wait time, and also providing better quality of care. Another one is the that um, without you know proper data tracking also management and um, the healthcare industry can be um, costly and um, wasteful error and that affect for example organization also patient that's why it's very important to manage the data uh, efficiently and also the accuracy and efficiency of a big big data uh, enable a multitude of cost saving opportunities for healthcare industry. And also, um, healthcare data analysis can revolu revolutionize the business intelligence uh, because business intelligence also um, we can expect it in um, the huge amount of data. And uh, we can, for example, expect it by uncovering usage pattern, offering supply chain, chain man analysis, and also enabling uh, performance monitoring and also ensuring and more strategic decision. So another one that's very important in, is um, efficient electronic health record access. So you know that um, we have a number of electronic health records and uh, consequently uh, we should uh, have a lot of uh, demographic, historical, and medical information. Uh, and uh, the integration of all information is very important for us because, for example, it can't, for example, only be in one hospital. It can be easily accessible in all hospitals and uh, that we can, for example, physician can track patient from one hospital. Uh, and also at the end, we can expect that um, the data can be integrated uh, and um, for the future research, for for example, finding pattern, all the information is accessible and can easily find, for example, a disease based on the data. And also big data has been a key player in not only minimizing paperwork and also replication, but we can also have reducing office visits and also laboratory tests. And also as a result of interdepartmental patient alignment. So with the big data, uh, records can be more easily available in, for example. And uh, for your expertise uh, has given us a new lens to, uh, with, uh, to view the integration of a big data analysis in healthcare and also your publication. And, uh, a few overview uh, in Indonesia, where uh, currently uh, the healthcare information system is shifting to toward uh, digitalization, and there are so many information system with various application uh, to overcome uh, its disease. For example, uh, for TB we have SCTB, uh, for our XIV we have CHA and etc. And uh, so that uh, very much help uh, data is still scattered, uh, stored, has not uh, centralized. Uh, I think uh, there will be uh, a lot of interesting discussion uh, from audience uh, from this problem uh, for you. So uh, we, it is time uh, we now move on a Q&A session. And the chat is passing with questions. So, uh, I think uh, we already have uh, the question. We have 10 minutes uh, to audience to 
uh, write the question in the Q&A chat. Yes, uh, for yeah, the I, first one, yeah. yes. Yes, uh, I have uh, three no. questions. Uh, may I read it to you? Uh, the first question uh, come from Bita Nataniela. Uh, the question is, with big data and all the convenience and benefits, will the need uh, of medical records in healthcare facility decrease or increase? Thank you. Uh, yes, you know that, um, for example, physician can, um, uh, for example, have fear um, because of the, for example, uh, if, for example, artificial intelligence come to the clinic that can, for example, uh, take uh, our job. But it's not so, for, for example, this um, this not happen for them because you know that um, this kind of system is helpful for them and to, for example have benefits from data uh, but uh, for for example first of all if we can for example adopt the medical recorders and for for example gathering data from for example paperwork or paper base uh, but um, if for example we are in the electronic healthcare uh, system uh, but uh, in this case, we only uh, have, for example, someone to check or um, assess our data quality uh, to, for example, and remind, for example, who um, entered the data that, for example, this data is, for example, is not complete or it's complete. And in that case, uh, we need, for example, medical recorders that, um, for example, check the data and nowadays, uh, for example, we have a quality and quantity assessment for data. It's, it's very important and that we have medical recorder and the role of this medical recorder is very important for us to consider in our, for example, um, developing um, process. Okay, uh, thank you, Ms. Hasna. Uh, we move to second question. Uh, this question comes from Dea Chalia Purnama. The question is, language is one of the obstacles that has been concerned in a big data. What is uh, the biggest problem that may occur because of the obstacle? And how can we minimize or even prevent it from happening? Thank you. Yes, in my opinion, uh, one of the uh, these challenges that uh, we face in, uh, for example, using this, this kind of system is and the security of data because um, for example most of the patient can trust and that's why it's very important to persuade them to you to use this system and also um, for example by for example giving access and to physician to nurses and uh, we should for example um, persuade them to use you know that um, because um, the data of them this is very important for them and um, maybe uh, most of the patient wouldn't like to, for example, inform to another um, provider. That's why it's very important and to have data security and also confidentiality uh, for patients uh, and let them know that uh, the data uh, can drive the secure um, process. And also yeah. another one is um, the, the cost and also um, infrastructure. Because um, usually that um, the data can be driven from various sources and need storage, and that's why we should, for example, provide a platform, cloud-based platform. And for the in this case, we should have um, the powerful infrastructure and to, for example, support um, the transferring data between organization organization. And also, you know, that um, can be hard, um, but um, for example, if, for example, we, uh, we have the lack of information, for example, someone not in the city and uh, this kind happen, but we should, for example, create a big plan for it and a strategic plan and step by step we should go through and uh, also answer, the, um, for example, the need of uh, the uh, Provider and also patients. Yes, uh, thank you for your explanation. Uh, 
uh, we have we have one more question, Miss Hasna. Uh, the question come from Yumna Fatina. Question is based on the explanation. It is said that with big data, record are more easily available in both the private and the public sector within secure information system. The question now is, what is the most effective way to secure data and public information based on the existing rules? Thank you. In this case, I mean the private and also a public hospital clinic actually as well. You know that uh, they may have a different system. In Iran, for example, in a public hospital, use, for example, and the system, like for example, Rayovanan or um, Tirage, in, for example, uh, for in the hospital or um, based on, for example, on the universities, for example, uh, Tehran University, Iran University, Shahid Beishli University, I mean in Tehran, but in uh, another cities, maybe different. But for example, all of them use, for example, a specific system uh, and also uh, for example for having um, data transformation between this kind of system and also with the private sector that private sector for example is completely different different rule different for example insurance uh, we should have uh, the um, platform that can be easily accessible and uh, for example private provider can uh, log in and also can uh, see and extract data for, for example, the process of care, that's very important. Uh, and also for, for example, uh, securing data, I told you that uh, the accessibility of data is very important. And also we should, for example, um, persuade um, physician, or the uh, physician or patient or any healthcare providers uh, to, um, for example, at the first step, um, be with us. And we should, for example, have them uh, the first step and we should, for example, show them the process. And for example, uh, we should, for example, uh, and tell them that, for example, how this system can help them for the for the future of treatment. Not This is not the obstacle. And this is um, like a facilitator for them to use um, this kind of system. Yes, thank you. Uh, we still have uh, extra time on the clock. Uh, may I write the next question? The next question uh, come from Raka Rafi Baskara. Are there difference in big data management management in each country, and what factors influence this? Thanks, Miss. And um, this is related to management. Yes, uh, yeah. I there are a lot of, um, for example, it depends. It depends on the country, but um, there are a lot of um, cloud-based uh, solution. Uh, in Iran, for example, uh, some company develop um, this solution for, for example, uh, data and uh, management. Too. But um, it depends on hospital and the strategy they, for example, follow. And um, with, for, you can also uh, see, for example, which hospital is uh, successful in this case. And also, we should, um, for example, for buying the system, we should, for example, ask them for proposal. Uh, by, for example, the goal of the, our, for example, organization or clinic. That's very important uh, to know the process, for example. And also, in the first of all, uh, before, for example, cloud based solution, uh, we should, for example, get our data in an efficient way. And we should integrate our data. It's very important. And uh, you know that um, nowadays also, we collect data, gather data, but um, maybe. For example, uh, we have also missing value. So it's very important uh, to assess uh, the data quality and for the future, yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Hosna. Maybe in this okay. chat, we have uh, another question from... Uh, From Natsua, Natsua Ahmad, uh, what is the most important when dealing with a medical record? 
you know that um, for example medical record uh, most important uh, if you the um, Ahmad means that uh, we should have for example can collect the data or uh, medical record medical record depends you know that if for example uh, we systematically uh, record data is uh, <clears throat> completely different and uh, different rule different uh, security information different for example uh, process um, but uh, most of the hospital and clinics that uh, want to go through the digitalization so in, in Iran is the same uh, I yeah, also had presentation on for example digital health solution uh, in uh, Iran uh, and also it's the name of the system that uh, the Ministry of Health uh, product uh, produce is um, the SEPAS that is in a Iranian electronic health record that um, the for example the clinics and uh, hospitals and uh, usually public hospital they should uh, report the data uh, to um, this system that is uh, like an integrated platform. And it can, for example, help um, the manager and organizer uh, to, for example, have the best uh, decision in the uh, in the case of, for example, um, drug drug management and also predicting specific disease or or also coronavirus that uh, we faced before. Yes, uh, thank you, and maybe uh, there. Are... Uh, one question more from Rikita. If the big data combined with AI, what is medical record rule in it? Uh, can you find me? Um, with, uh, yes, uh, artificial intelligence, yes. Yeah. Actually, uh, you know that um, artificial intelligence is based on um, data. If, if we have a um, for example, um, qualified data, and also if you have, if we, for example, gather um, data with the um, best quality, uh, we should, uh, for example, uh, use artificial intelligence, uh, and also we should uh, use algorithm to predict the specific disease, uh, and also this and this is very helpful, and, and also you know that um, there are uh, several systems that have been developed. Uh, for for example, predicting this, as I told you, that uh, uh, during COVID nineteen, um, the scientists in Iran also developed a system to predict um, the, for example, uh, disease, uh, but um, and differentiate between the uh, phonomony and also COVID nineteen. Uh, it can also be used by algorithm that extracted um, from the picture that um, can uh, derive from CT scan uh, medical devices. And this can uh, be helpful for the future. And also with, the, uh, for example, this kind of system, uh, we need, uh, for example, physician uh, to see the process because <clears throat> you know that um, we should have, for example, highly... Uh, with for the system with highly accuracy, but um, you know that um, because uh, the intelligence of physician is something else, and uh, we should, for example, adopt them uh, for the process of the treatment. These kind of systems are a facilitator for them, but it's not, uh, as I told you, obstacle for, for example, preventing them uh, to treat patients. Yes, uh, thank you, Ms. Fasna. Uh, there are a uh, question from YouTube. Uh, this come from Johanna. How can valuable information be extracted from unstructured healthcare record, like doctor's notes and clinical narrative, uh, sorry, clinical narrative uh, using big data analysis? Uh, you know that uh, in, for example, narrative data, before, for example, uh, we uh, from the base, if for example we should have this kind of system, we should. Um, it's better to have, for example, uh, the like um, the fill uh, field button, but not uh, like narrative. I know that uh, most of the report are narrative, but um, for example, uh, in this case also we can use the text mining. 
you know that uh, there are text mining system or method that can, for example, uh, that extract data uh, from for data that are, have been written, uh, like a narrative data. But uh, this kind of system, we should, for example, and uh, can be test um, because it's very important to have uh, the quality of the data and uh, at the end we should because prediction of this is, is not uh, like for example a simple thing the data before and also evaluate it, evaluate them for the future research but uh, you know that um, this um for for example developing this system usually if for example um physician can for example enter the data by uh, click and also uh, only by, for example, the first letter, uh, it can help them, uh, for, for example, um, go through more and, uh, for example, um, can detect um, more details. Um, but for example, if they want to write, um, maybe it, it, it's like a time consuming for them. And they maybe they, you know, for example, they need someone to write them for them and, that also we can have in hospitals, for for example, radiologists. But um, it's very important to consider all for developing um, the system uh, for, for example, our purpose of uh, the organization. Yes, uh, thank you for a great explanation. Uh, maybe uh, one question for, for me, if I may. Uh, in yeah. Indonesia, we have a crucial, uh, crucial uh, problem about the privacy and security, uh, especially in data in uh, hospital. Uh, how you address the ethical and privacy concern surrounding the collection and usage of patient data in EXR? Uh, Actually, uh, you know that uh, people uh, that can, uh, for example, provide uh, the privacy uh, for, for example, um, patient and also provider. And one of the organizations that we should consider in our, for example, the system is the HIPAA. But as I told you, uh, the accessibility of, the, of data is very important. Uh, but uh, you know that uh, we should, for example, um, first of all, teach physician that this kind of data is very important because we usually uh, when for example uh, physician uh, doesn't have time they for example give uh, the accessibility to nurses to for example put this data in. it's a long um, process and uh, at the end maybe we face problem and that's why we should for example uh, teach um, for example who for example benefits from our system uh, that uh, use the data uh, in a uh, proper uh, way and also um, it's very important uh, to um, give access uh, for for example each provider or nurses uh, with for example um, the work that they've done because it's very important maybe for example um, for example the financial sector maybe uh, doesn't need um, the diagnosis of patient and so and we can, for example, give access um, um, based on the, for example, goal, based on the role they follow. And it's very important to consider all to develop um, the system and the successful system, actually. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Uh, Asna, uh, for your explanation. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Ms. Hosna has provided us with incredible valuable insight uh, into the implementation of big data analysis with AHR today. Uh, while we have covered a lot, uh, there's many, I think there are many uh, uh, questions that you are asking. Uh, this is a perfect opportunity to direct a question uh, to an, any additional additional queries to Miss Hosna social media, right? And uh, we have a, a robust discussion today. Uh, thank you for your uh, all your question 
queries at this point. Uh, we'll need to wrap up uh, the Q&A session, uh, Ms. Osna. Uh, would you like uh, to uh, offer some conclu conclusion, uh, Drew, before we wrap up? Uh, yes, um, in one minute, uh, I told you that uh, about uh, everything is about data. And if, for example, we have, um, we, for example, want to have an integrated system, at the end, uh, we can, for example, have the result in patient satisfaction, improvement in healthcare quality, and also reducing costs because um, the data that uh, we have, uh, you know, that um, the big, this is big data and we have it from various resources. And when, for example, we integrate it, we have all data in one, for example, spot and, uh, you know, that um, for future research, for scientists, for, for example, researcher, for physician, for nurses, for everyone benefits from data. This kind of system is very helpful and uh, also can, for example, uh, help uh, the quality of care in the future. Yes, uh, thank you, Ms. Hosna. Uh, today, uh, I will uh, give some summaries uh, the, for the, uh, this seminar, uh, ladies and gentlemen. As we draw this uh, enlightening uh, seminar to a uh, close, uh, let's revisit a nine key reason we discussed today for making uh, to shift uh, to big data analysis. Uh, in AXR, uh, first one is better patient tracking, uh, enabling more responsive and targeting uh, patient care. And the second, improve the uh, diagnosis, uh, making diagnosis uh, faster and more accurate, and improving treatment of opioid addictive. Uh, and this is op offering more effective treatment uh, protocol. And then faster development of treatment. Uh, this is uh, streamlining the R&D process, reducing fraud. Uh, this is utilizing data to identify and eliminate improper activities. And the seventh is efficient medical imaging, enhancing diagnosis and capabilities through advancing imaging. And then optimizing the staff scheduling uh, to improving operational efficiency. And eight, uh, reduce uh, cost to lowering operational Recording stopped. Uh, true data and driving. Recording in progress. And the last is streamlining EXR access. Uh, it uh, simplify the accesses of crucial patient uh, data. So uh, today has uh, has been another invaluable uh, day in IG uh, DM uh, in two thousand and twenty three. Uh, Dr. Kandu Hosna presentation and the subsequent discussion has enriched our understanding uh, of the possibility that uh, big data analytics will bring to healthcare. Uh, once again, we uh, thank you so much to Ms. Hosna for your uh, great presentation. Uh, may uh, the, all the participants give applause to Ms. Hosna. Okay. Uh, on behalf Thank of so I, yes. on behalf of IGM uh, 2020, I'd like to thanks all for all the uh, your active participants for your uh, for all audience and let's uh, uh, we conference uh, tomorrow for another day of learning and sharing. Uh, have a wonderful uh, day ahead. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Once again, thanks a million to our moderator, Ms. Rita Dian Pratiwi Eskep MPH. And also, thank you very much to our distinguished speaker, Ms. Hosna Salmani, for sharing your insights and experience with us today.
Before that, I would like to make some important announcements for all participants. The materials can be accessed at bit.ly slash 2023 materials and the certificate will be sent out no more than three weeks after this event. I would also like to remind all participants to fill out the participation form using the link or barcode provided by the committee in the chat box and on the screen. Participants who do not attend and fill the attendance form in both day one and day two will not receive a certificate. Recording stopped. Recording in progress. It is unfortunate that we have reached the end of the event. I, Francisca Randichitraloka, as the master of ceremonies of today's event, would like to thank all participants who attended today's event. As the representatives of the International Guest Lecture on Health Information Management Committee, I sincerely apologize for the many shortcomings and mistakes during the event. We hope that you have gained valuable knowledge and wish you to always stay healthy. Thank you for participating in today's event and hope to see you again at the International Guest Lecture on Health Information Management 2024. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Recording stops.